Good morning, folks. Hey, good morning. How you doing? Welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. Come on in. Cool. I asked Keith, I said, hey, can we have a shop tour? Because um, I think everyone, I hope, who watches our channel knows and loves Keith's videos. I feel like he's sort of one of the original you know, YouTube metalworking machinists and so forth. But um, it's funny because when you walk around a shop, you realize Keith does such a good job using this space and making it work. And uh, I just thought we'd poke, poke around if that works yeah. for you. I think no matter how big the space is, you're going to fill it up. But what you do when you do fill it up is the, the key thing. Making sure every one of your machines is working to its potential is the secret. Uh, your secondary bench and, and uh, uh, walking space comes second sometimes. And uh, so that's why a lot of times, in, in, especially in the other room there, I don't have an actual working bench except for the one in the corner because I just, I got so many workable machines in there that I don't want to disturb. And so I sacrifice uh, work, working benches sometimes, but nothing beats this bench and it's pretty well loaded up now. I remember um, when you took everything off and did the sandpaper, tack paper down. I can't remember yeah. what project that was, but yeah. oh, that was yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, had, I, it all I in. used this end of it there and, and uh, I still have some of that roll of paper there uh, ready to go and just, um, uh, the regular uh, cheapo cheapo um, adhesive spray works yeah, the best on that, funny. you know. So, but uh, so yeah, grinding his uh, yeah, that's my rod oven here. Oven. But I also I also dry my desiccant in here. Oh, that's a good idea. And I have my little carrier in here. In fact, actually, I dry more desiccant in here than I <laughs> than I've been welding lately. In fact, actually, okay. I got a little rust build up on my electrodes there, but probably throw them out. Uh, Send it down yeah, to Adam. Don gave me this new uh, digital chart here, Don, Don's Auto, cool. and uh, so I, this is a you know getting a really nice metal one is really, really oh, handy. That's for his exhaust yeah. fan, in case you were concerned. <laughs> uh, Keith's really got the plasma cam down recipe down, making some great parts on it, and uh, I think he may have some stuff coming later this summer on more plasma cam. Yeah, mods and hacks. Yeah, I got uh, I got uh, several things actually just sitting right here in the box, and uh, set that over on my other bench. But uh, yeah, I got uh, I got a little engraver here. Cool engraving attachment coming on the plasma cam, and in the box down below here. Holy cow! Yeah, we're gonna be doing uh, some. Uh, uh, carving and we have the 3D uh, software to introduce that and uh, it comes complete with the vacuum system and so we're going to be putting that together and playing with a few other things here. I, th the, uh, I think Keith's going to have more CNC <laughs> machines than manual machines converting them over uh, to the dark side. Yeah and I think you know still down here in the box somewhere I think. I think I've got the, the rest of my pipe cutter attachment and we'll be putting that together and and uh, that's the reason why I'm going to be pulling the plasma cam apart and shortening my legs and getting me some more room on my water tray. So the pipe cutter will be like a fourth axis? Uh, where it'll... It, yeah, it actually, it, it's still three three axis, so, uh, but it rotates mm -hmm. and the lineal and then you still yeah. have your height control on your head because I do have the digital height control. So you're still going to be able to control that cut depth and the pierce height and all, all of the stuff there. Um, but the... Uh, the carving attachment will let me do profiling and things like that. So it's awesome. Yeah, cool. Um, actually, this is uh, this is not going to look like this in a day or two because my shear, my roller, and everything else is getting out of here, and Woo. the little south bend south leaves bend, yeah. the weekend. No kidding. So what? Today so, is Thursday. Yeah, and that's gone soon. Yeah, on the eleventh, he's going to come pick it up. So um, I, I'm going to. I think I'm going to be doing a video, and I think I'm going to call it. Third shift. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's going to really let me get this blue leg down on the ground and get it uh, here. And I might do a little more arrangement in here so that one, I can create a video environment and also a working environment so that I can enjoy this machine. And I think uh, I think I want to go ahead and um, contact the guys at Shooting Star and uh, we'll see about putting a readout on this thing as well. This is like no man's land though. This is the part of the shop you never see. Okay, here's here's a shaper, one of the very first machines I restored completely. He even taken 
parts like the ram and taking them into work at North Star Propeller and remachining the dovetail and this is 100% rebuilt and it has probably a whole 10 hours on it since I did. I brought it from California and it just needs to be set up, mounted down solid and then played and enjoyed. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, the shop is, he does a lot with it. <laughs> we're, we're still playing with our X-Carve, and it seems like we get new gadgets for it beforehand. Uh, we did have an episode with the controller. The motherboard and the controller actually um, uh, crapped out. And um, anyway, I sent it in. The guys have got phenomenal uh, customer service. They took care of it. They shipped it back, and I got it in here. And... Uh, and of course, John came here this morning and actually showed me a little thing about hooking up the chili pepper uh, program on it. And uh, actually, he just went, doo -doo -doo, and then we were moving this thing around. And uh, uh, I, I hope I paid attention. So. <laughs> um, and this room is still, it's, it's, it's actually still a combination of shithole. And I, I, I get uh, some of my boxes that stuff gets shipped in here and everything else. And of course, you don't throw away boxes until you know that you're not going to be shipping out anything. And, I, ha I collect a certain amount of packing and boxes for the uh, the uh, what's in your box toolbox giveaway, and uh, so we're we're ready to start rocking and rolling on this machine again now that we actually have a controller and I got some motion in on it. Hey, the other the other video you saw, my desk was nice and clear and clean. Okay, it didn't take long, did it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, daily, I get uh, things dropped in. Here's a sailboat shaft here, and uh, uh, looks like they need a new one. This here's a, a three-piece or a four-piece, and uh, it's a it's a blowboat shaft, and it uh, it has oh. a unique prop on here. It almost feels plastic. Yeah, is it? Yeah, it's some kind of glass material. Interesting. Yeah. So we've been working on Tom's project with the KT spindle, and that's it. That's ongoing. The reason why um, it, I really call a lot of my shooting in my videos live is because I, I'll shoot a segment and then the, the part is taken out and I'm actually it'll sit here for a couple of days and then I get back onto it and then I'm creating the video so by shooting live I've, I've given you part one and part two and part three is actually loaded right now and here's the part sitting here and it's still it's still not finished so there still could be a scrapping on there and that's as real and as live <laughs> as you can get right there um, but like I said, I got a spare piece of material in case that happens. Keith was actually showing me, this is really cool, cut and cast. He flipped his uh, flips his tools upside down, and that way when it's turning, you're turning the chuck backwards, you're throwing the chips down and not up in the air. And then you just got a little piece, uh, I assume, cold rolled in there yeah. that lets you set your height consistently with your, your big Aloris here. Yeah. It's um, funny to see a, it's funny to see a parking attachment. Yep. On another K and T. We'll see. I hope I think Adams will come together. Obviously yeah. the reason I was here today was Keith wanted me to come by just to get a fitting uh <laughs> for the, the four jaw belt here. Yep, I got it. Which which Keith did an awesome job on. We'll see uh, we'll i I'm just joking though. We'll see uh, we'll see who wears this, whether it'll be Tom <laughs> or Adam or, or Keith himself. Or John. Nah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna build a computerized four jaw that self centers. That's that's what I would do. Uh, yeah. Sweet. And uh, the the rest of it is just daily daily mess. Um, and of course I clear that out usually around where I'm doing a video. That's that's the secret of my shop. Always looking clean. Cool. Um, you know. And there's projects like that that never really hit the screen all the time. Right. And this is a stainless steel rudder that I've I've put together and it's for a, about a 35 foot duffy and. Uh, the, uh, the blade is actually cut out on a plasma cam, and, uh, wow. and I also I set up my tracer attachment, and I turn the ball on the end of the shafts, and then I set it up on my jig table in there, and then I stick weld that, and then just kind of finish it all off. And of course, I put the keyway and everything else in the stem before I weld it in, and then I put that in the right position. Got it. And uh, you know, so are you still are you staying pretty busy with work we don't see on videos? I'm I'm straight out. And any time that you see the slowdown now on my videos and stuff yeah. is because because I am just too busy, <laughs> and and of course I, I I'm trying to take more time for Vanessa, yeah. my chickens, yeah. taking care of my yard and and all of that stuff as well. So uh, I try to balance it all out. You mind showing us? The, yeah, yeah. My wife and I swung by to say hi to Keith maybe last last fall or something, and yeah. um, it was definitely before you had your foot done, 
And uh, these chickens are living the life, man, let me tell you. <laughs> That's why they call them the Chicken Hilton. Yeah, we moved our bird bath out in the middle there. It was uh, getting kind of uh, bunched up over there and uh, the birds are really liking it. In fact, it's ready for a change of water again. They, that's a day they splash out that much water. <laughs> the grapes are starting to come on our vine there. Yeah, this is Angie. She's, uh, she was brooding and uh, she came off of brood and the girls were really picking on her. So the back of her head and everything Ooh. else. So I'm actually letting her run free and, uh, and, and Hootie's kind of keeping an eye on. This is Hootie's pad, so Angie and, and Hootie <laughs> can wow. share this area right in here. Actually, Hootie's got some growth on um, his uh, roost there, starting to grow. And uh, then all the nesting boxes in here, we got a white rock over there. There's a Buffy and there's Jane. And that, so they get that other side. And I keep it during the nest, so even when we get a northeaster and the snow's piling up everywhere, they have that area there yeah. to, uh, um, Get a close up on the girls. Now uh, you can see here's here's some plasma cam work here. <laughs> did my louvers, so I decided I did redesign these black ones right here. So you know this this coop here I built. This one here was the one that Vanessa bought me for Father's Day and Got started it. this whole thing. And uh, right now I actually I have some work to do on my automated door. My automated door, the electronics oh, cool. is is really. Uh, uh, give me a problem right now. So it's either dirt or dust in there and I got it unplugged right now. It should be on a timer um, or no, it it's uh, it's sensed by the uh, temperature and light. Interesting. Yeah, so open and close yeah, their, their is, door yeah. right up yeah. over here. And then that's the fat chick's uh, entrance there, the original one. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Yeah, and I let them on out. So um, this one here is where I had them brooding. I got it all cleaned out now, and I'm going to be putting in the uh, nesting boxes back in here in, in the roost. But um, it, anyway, we had a couple brooding, and uh, we didn't have success on the eggs this year, but uh, so far for this brood. And so we put them kind of back together, and, and uh, but they're they're loving it here. I'm going to ask the dumb question. Okay. What, what is brooding? Brooding, brooding is when a female chicken. Um, goes into the maternal instinct of just sitting on eggs, and so okay. she shuts down. <laughs> Morning. She shuts down her egg producing, and uh -oh. uh, she just becomes uh, nest sitting, and and she just st she stays on that nest and keeps in she's incubating the eggs and uh so, so that's if you want to have more chickens on eggs yeah yeah that's if you want and and uh really the only difference between an egg that uh you can eat yeah. or hey buffy oh is that the only difference it's not whether it's fertilized or not it's whether it was it, it, it's incubated, incubated. Or not. no yeah. kidding yeah I you can know. actually have a a, a a a seminated egg but if it never incubates it never produces anything interesting yeah oh. no you know it's Take a walk out here. We'll just give a quick look on. This is Hootie. Hootie's two years old now, <laughs> and uh, he's he's the new man. Yeah, he and, rolls the uh, roost. Yeah, look at his spurs. He's got. He is gentle as heck. Uh, uh, Birdo, his father, uh, actually started getting mean, so he became Birdo Stew. Got it. And um, and Hootie, I, I caught him the same day I caught the other ones, and uh, and I said, hey, uh, you know, we get along. You can stay. And uh, and so far we're getting along and he's staying. I kind of put this in here so they always have some of the outside realm, you know, mm -hmm. they, this gives them room. And I'm going to be redoing this. Now the winter before last we had all that snow, mm -hmm. okay, th we had snow up to here, okay. There was no way that they could come out here at all and that's what drove me to create the wooden section where they It's nice. Yeah. containers here are pumpkins that are actually just seeds that were dropped in from the pumpkins I feed the chickens last year and oh. then they they grew in here 
And when I rode it till I went ahead and I dug them up and transplanted them into there, and that's how we got those. It's a hell of a good big size garden. Uh, Twenty by sixty is wow. the size here, um, and we got our tomatoes there, peppers here. The squash is starting to come up. We did that by seed. Um, lettuce is like ready to pick right now. And uh, but that that whole twenty-four uh, uh, hole opening there is uh, all squash, and then we, it, we'll let it run over the lettuce when it you know that matures. Uh, some beans. Uh, different kind of climbing beans and also scarlet runner beans and we got two kinds of cucumbers there three kinds of kale here we have uh, <laughs> broccoli I've already snipped a little heads off so it it it, uh, it produced an early head already and uh, I, I cut it off and we're hoping that it'll it'll shoot up another one and then uh, two cabbages um, purple cabbage for uh, some wonkies oh and, wow uh, <laughs> my wife's Polish yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I'm with and, you and uh, the, the regular cabbage there, I kind of grew that for the girls. Uh, and then we just got some potatoes down in here. So, folks, if, uh, if there's ever an apocalypse, you want to find <laughs> someone who can do metalworking, welding, machining, gardening, restoring Porsches, <laughs> raising chickens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you gotta keep busy, right? Yeah, no, it's, 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 uh, it's awesome, right? Keith kind of yeah. does it all. Well, I try to. There are those things I choose not to do. Yeah, like what? <laughs> uh, I don't. Uh, I don't get greasy anymore. I don't do any yeah. automotive work unless it's on my own and um, stuff like that. But I have special uh, um, agreements with the town and stuff here, so I don't do any automotive work and I don't have a solvent tank and I don't have any of the things that would be normally hazardous to any kind of ground setting. Yeah, in case, uh, for those of you guys who haven't had a chance to visit Keith, you know, it's literally right here on the main drag in a really beautiful town in Cape Cod, and you know, we're across the street from, is that, a, I think there's a school? Yeah. 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 We're actually going a little green now. You can see partial assembly right there. Wow. There's panels on, but I'm getting solar put on the place. Help awesome. Break, break up the, uh, the electric awesome. bill here coming up. Yeah. We, we know prices are going up right after the election. Yeah. <laughs> You mind if we walk back through the shop? I'm, I have to look and see if I have to delete that first part because of the um, music. Yeah. Yeah. I love that sign. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I mean, that's that that sign is basically about attitude, you know, and uh, so. Cool. I, we have, I'm not sure whether I've got to edit out some footage in the beginning because of uh, the wonderful world of YouTube copyrights. But if, if I do, here's a quick peek again at the uh, sort of front end of Keith's shop with his, with his work table and the plasma cam and his grinders and welding yeah. setup and all that. Cool. Well, hey, uh, Keith, thanks for having me. It's always good to see you. Uh -huh. I'll see you. Heck, I'll see you again here in a few yeah. weeks. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. yeah. The, we'll, be, we'll be out stands. As far as East yeah. Summer Bash. Yeah. All right. Take Catch care, folks. Get it done.